Hi, I'm John Storms, and today we are going to be playing with some Falcon long range receivers. But before we get started, please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like the video. That helps other people find the channel in the little search algorithm. Much appreciated. So, this is the long range receiver setup I'm testing today. So, I'm focusing on the newer smart receiver boards. This is the SRX1 and the SRX2. And I am chaining these off of an F48 V4. So these I got off of the pixelcontroller.com site from David Pitts at Falcon Christmas. And the way I have it hooked up is I have my F48 V4 and I have that connected via Ethernet to my home computer. <clears throat> Then the F48 V4 can run a maximum of 33,792 pixels, which is a lot. Um, the number of physical ports really varies, and that's why this is a good board for a distributed network. You can kind of slice it and dice it any way that you need to. So the F48 has two main board configurations. One is the 8 ports is the eight smart receiver chain mode that is its 32 port mode and that's the one i'm using for this experiment <clears throat> so when you do this you can only use eight of the 12 ports and i have them highlighted in red here right so this middle row is not being used and when you do this you can have up to 10 24 pixels per output right now the other board configuration mode is 12 receiver chains, right? And that's where you use all 12 of these ports, and it reduces the number of pixels per port down to 704, okay? Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. There's not going to be a lot of cases where you're going to need 1,000 pixels on a port. The other thing about that is what if the second or third pixel goes bad and then all the other pixels behind it go with it. If you do less pixels per port, then there's less pixels to go bad behind any one um, pixel. So builds in just a little bit of robustness. Uh, the other reason is if you do 1024 pixels per port, you will have to do uh, power injection. So doing less pixels per port, um, you know, helps in that regard. And the reason that uh, keeps my pixel count down is the frame rate. So you can maintain 40 frames per second up to 704 pixels per port. And what that means is at 705, that frames per second begins to degrade. And what, how, that, how you see that is if you're doing effects across your display, they won't be as smooth right? Um, so for me, that 40 frames per second is pretty important. So I keep my, uh, my uh, pixels per port to 700 or four or less. But anyway, um, it all depends on what you're after and what you're looking for, right? So if you're doing really, really simple um, effects, you know, good chance nobody will notice. So it, it all depends. So in this particular experiment, what we're going to do is I have a little red box around port one through four, okay? <clears throat> so this one RJ45 jack, not an ethernet jack, and it even has a little red interior to tell you that it's different. This one jack represents ports one through four, okay? So I run a Cat5 cable from that port over to my SRX1, which has four pixel outputs on it. What happens is there's a little dial here and I change that and I take my little screwdriver and I click that dial until it says A. And that, that says is that this receiver is going to be ports 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, right? Then I run another um, Cat5 cable from this board over to my SRX2. Now the SRX2 is two smart receivers on one board. So here I go in and I take my screwdriver and I turn the dial to B, okay? Because I want it to start at B. But since it has two receivers on the same board, it's gonna consume B and C. So this first bank are gonna be ports one, or 1B, 2B, 3B, 4B. And then the second bank is gonna be 1C, 2C, 3C, and 4C, 
Okay, and then this one, this board is the last board on the chain and it has a terminator dip switches. So we set those terminator dip switches to on to indicate that this is the end of the chain. Okay, so we have our controller board and then that is connected to receiver boards. This receiver board has one receiver on it. This receiver board has two receivers on it. Each receiver is associated with a letter A, B, or C, and that's how it numbers out the ports. All right, now for a quick pass of the actual physical setup. So this is my Falcon F48 V4. Uh, this purple wire is my ethernet, right? Now, this cable is going to my long range receiver. This is not ethernet. Even the ports are red, so you can tell they're not ethernet and these are black, okay? Now they are all using Cat5, Cat5e, Cat6 cables, and they're all using RJ45 jacks, but it's the, what's running across the cable and how the pins are used that determine if it's, you know, ethernet or something else which is very important distinction in our hobby because if you mix up for example Lightarama which some of those pins they carry voltage across these wires then uh, then you have a problem but anyway not to rant about that too much we have plugged in here a cat5 cable into port one we have the board set up for 32 port mode, which means I'm not using the uh, the center row here. Um, and this cable goes all the way over to here to this guy. Okay. Now don't let all the wires scare you. This is a Falcon SRX-1. Okay. So what will happen is this guy we have is set up so we have four outputs and each of these outputs is hooked up to 200 pixels each right we have this little i don't want to put my finger in there too much and get shocked this dial here i have that set to a okay so what will happen is i'm off of port one through four on the controller so these four ports will be um 1A, 2A, 3A, and 4A, okay? Because they're the first in the chain. We uh, don't have terminators on this board, right? The SRX1 doesn't have terminators. And you can see the little green light that says we have power. Okay, now I come over. Now on this one, we have another patch a Cat5 cable running out of the other port to this one, okay? Now this is an SRX2 V4. And what that means is that this is two receiver boards on one. Okay, and if you can kind of see through the wires, you can see they drew boxes around these. So what happens is, this is the first one, this is the second one. So I find the dial selector amongst all of my cables. And you can see that that dial, if I get it to focus right, is pointing at B. Okay, so what that means is this set of four is B. So it will be 1B, 2B, 3B, 4B. This next set is C, 1C, 2C, 3C, 4C. Okay, and that's how the chaining works, right? You reuse the numbers, but then you iterate that subsequent letter to get the ports. Okay, and then on this one, I also have 200 pixels hanging off of each one of those ports. Okay, then on this board, it does have terminator switches. And since this is the last board in the chain, those dip switches are all set to on. And that indicates that this is the last board in the chain. Okay, so that's the physical setup. Okay, so now I am connected to my Falcon F48 V4 via Ethernet. So I am logged into this board right here. Okay, so go back there. The first thing I want to look at is on the status page, on the status tab, is board configuration. So I have it set up for eight smart receiver chains. Honestly, in my experiment, I could go either way. 
right? It could be eight or 12, it doesn't matter. I have 200 pixels per port, so I am nowhere, and I have way less than uh, the total maximum pixel. So it really doesn't matter my configuration, but for the purpose of this experiment, I'm doing the eight smart receiver chains. Now I go to output settings and select pixel output. And this shows me all of the ports. The best way, the recommended way to set up the ports on your Falcon Pixel controllers is through X lights. In this case, I'm just straight up brute force testing pixels off of my controller. I don't have it set up in X lights, so I'm setting this up manually on the board. Arguably, this is harder. This should be a step you can essentially skip, but it's a good skill to know. So, I have my smart receiver set up on ports one through four, right? So how do I get this A, B, C business? Well, this little blue plus sign, and it took me a while to find it, and I called the Zoom room, and those guys helped me out. It's this little blue, little blue plus sign says convert to smart receiver. So I click on that, and you see 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A. So if I go back to my little chart, that is representing the ports on this first receiver. Well, I need to represent these guys too, B and C. So I go and I press the blue plus sign again, and now I got 1B, 2B, 3B, and so on. And I go and I click it again, and now I got up through C, okay? So this first one represents that first SRX1 board. These next two represent the SRX2 right, because it has two receivers on one board. Well now, since I'm doing this manually, I gotta tell it how many pixels per port. So I set up 200 pixels per port because that's what I could do reliably without power injection. Uh, and I wanna set that up for all of them. So what I do is I get in here and where I have 200 highlighted, here's a cool trick. If you press it, and I learned this from Keith Wesley just recently at the Florida Mega Mini in 2024, it, in his advanced control, pixel, uh, Falcon controller class, if I hit F3, see that? It automatically populates the next line with 200. So I can just keep hitting F3 until I have 200 in all of these. See that? Nice and easy. Good trick. Now brightness, I want to set the brightness at 30% because that's where I run my show. And I can do the same trick here. Now that I've set it to 30, I can hit F3 and it will set it. Or I could hit Shift F3 and it does all of the columns all at once. See, isn't that cool? And that's it, that's all I have to do to set up the port. So I hit save, and it saved the configuration. So now I go to test, and you see here it has all of my ports, one A, you know, one A, you know, one through four A, one through four B, one through four C. So if I say enable, I should see color wash, and I do. See, and it is doing color wash across these two chained receivers, right? So this is the first one in the chain, SRX1, with 200 pixels per port for a total of 800 pixels. Over here, we have the SRX2, which is two receivers, one board. So this is B, 800 pixels, and this is C, 800 pixels. Doing color wash, okay? So... That is our first little test using uh, chained receiver boards.